Alright, in this video I'd like to go over some examples of solving linear inequalities, including at the end compound inequalities. Alright, so let's begin with looking at solving 2x is less than or equal to 7x plus 10. Alright, so very similar to when solving linear equations, uh, our goal is to you know, isolate the x. So you, uh, we can subtract 7x from both sides. Let me see that. Subtract 7x from both sides, and that would give us negative 5x is less than or equal to 10. All right? Everybody agree? Subtract 7x from both sides. And then to get the x by itself, we need to divide both sides by a negative 5, right? So we're going to have x on this side. But remember, when dividing both sides of an inequality by a negative number, what must we remember to do? That's right, reverse the inequality symbol. So this is now going to be greater than or equal to, and 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2. All right, so the solution is x is uh, greater than or equal to negative 2. Now, what would that look like graphically? Well, we'd plot negative 2, and we want all numbers greater than negative 2, so that would be out here to the right of negative 2. So we shade that. Don't forget the arrow on the end to let it know it goes on forever. And then is negative 2 included or not? In this case, it is included, so you could use a closed circle or a bracket. I'm going to stick with the bracket. Because what's the other way we can write this? Um, in interval notation. So down here in interval notation, it would look like negative 2 to infinity. Infinity is not included. All right, so here's how you write the um, solution for uh, the three different notations. I'm not worried so much about set notation. And depending on what you're being asked, uh, which notation you're, you're um, asked to give back, uh, you know, choose the appropriate one. All right, so let's look at uh, another example. I guess we start by distributing the negative 5 through and the 4 through, right? So we have 15 minus 15 plus 10x is less than 4x minus 20. All right, we can combine up uh, left-hand side. We see the 15s go away. So we have 10x on this side is less than 4x minus 20. All right, so we can subtract 4x from both sides. That would give us 6x is less than negative 20. And then divide both sides by 6. Since it's a positive number, we don't switch the inequality symbol around, so it stays less than. And we get negative 20 divided by 6, which is negative 10 thirds. Graphically, we'd say here's negative 10 thirds, and then shade out to the left because we want numbers that are less than negative 10 thirds, little arrow. Negative 10 thirds is not included, so open circle or parenthesis. And then in interval notation, we would do negative infinity up to negative 10 thirds. Negative 10 thirds is not included. All right, and so that's the solution set for this problem in um, the different notations. All right, so uh, the idea is the same as solving linear equations. The only thing you need to really remember is when uh, dividing both sides of an inequality by a negative number, then we must switch the inequality symbol around. And then, and that's, that's the only difference when solving. And then the different notations. We can have a graphical representation of the solution. You know, we shade on the number line. Or we can have interval notation. Or we can even have set notation, like we talked about in the previous video. But once we have that... Um, but once we have the algebraic solution, then the set notation is pretty easy because it's just all x such that x is less than negative 10 thirds. All right, so I'm just going to concentrate on these three notations right now. All right, so now let's talk about something called compound inequalities. All right, so now compound inequalities means we're dealing really with, with more than one inequality, linear inequality, at one time. For example, look at this one. We're looking for all the real numbers that are solutions to this inequality on the left or this inequality on the right. So we got the word or that um, uh, is used for compound inequalities because we're dealing with this inequality or this inequality. We're all the numbers that satisfy either the one on the left or the one on the right. right? So it's not really any different from solving um, your linear inequality we had a minute ago. You know, over here on the left we'll go subtract 2x from both sides, you get 2x. Subtract 1 from both sides, you get negative 6. So we uh, divide both sides by positive 2. So x is negative 3. I did that kind of fast, so make sure you understand the um, steps in between. And then the one on the right, well, we can subtract 2x from both sides. So you'd have negative 5 is greater than or equal to negative 5x. 
Then to get x by itself, we need to divide both sides by negative 5, and because it's a negative number, we need to switch the direction of the inequality symbol. So negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1, is less than or equal to x. Right? And we've got this word or in between them. All right, so graphically, we've got x is less than negative 3. So where would that be? Well, you say, here's negative 3, right? And we want to shade off to the left because we want numbers that are less than. Little arrow. And then negative 3 is not included, so we have a parenthesis or an open circle. And then here, over this one, we have 1 is less than or equal to x. Well, that means the same thing as x is greater than or equal to 1, just written a different way. Everybody see that? All right, so graphing that on the number line, we see, all right, here's 1. And we're going to shade out to the right. And then we have our little arrow. And then 1 is included, so we have a bracket or a closed circle. All right, and this down here on the number line, this would be the graphical representation of the solutions um, of this compound inequality up here. Uh, that is an or compound inequality. In interval notation, that would be negative infinity to negative 3 would be this first interval. And then 1 to infinity would be the one on the right. And then remember from a previous video, we have the union symbol in between them. So there are the three representations for the compound inequality that is separated with the word or. Because really it means we're looking for all the numbers that are solutions to this inequality or this inequality. So it doesn't really matter, right? So if you take any number less than negative 3, it makes this left inequality true. That's great. It doesn't necessarily make the inequality over here true on the right, right? But that doesn't matter. We need to make one of the two true. All right, so that's what the idea of the or means, right? Look for all the numbers that make either this one true or that one true. Compare that to the next example, which is the word and. So now we're looking for all the real numbers that are solutions to this inequality on the left and this inequality on the right. So we're looking for numbers that make both of them true. right? So the or, we're looking for numbers that make either one of them true. And for the and, we're looking for numbers that make both of them true. Right? So again, you solve like normal. Right? So we've got add 1 to both sides, 6. Divide both sides by positive 3. The inequality does not switch around because it's a positive number. So you have 2 is greater than or equal to x, which really means x is less than or equal to 2. Everybody agree these two things down here say the same thing, right? Okay, so now let's do the one on the right. All right, we'll subtract 3x from both sides. So negative x minus 3x would be negative 4x is less than 4, and then divide both sides by a negative 4, because it's a negative number, switch the inequality symbol around, and we get 4 divided by negative 4, which is negative 1. All right, so then graphically, what do we have here? All right, well, you have numbers that, you want numbers that are less than 2, and you know, over here you want numbers that are greater than negative 1. So we have negative 1 and 2. Make sure you put the numbers correctly on the number line, the smaller number on the left, the larger number on the right. All right, so we want numbers that are less than 2, so that would be to the left of 2. But at the same time, we're looking for numbers that are greater than negative 1. Everybody see that? Numbers are greater than negative 1. So less than, less than 2 goes all this way, greater than negative 1 goes to the right. We're looking for where the two areas overlap because that's what the numbers they would have in common, right? And that would be all the numbers in between. Everybody see that? If you want x is less than 2, then it's all numbers to the left of 2 towards infinity. And if you want numbers that are greater than um, negative 1, then you want all numbers to the right of negative 1. And because this is an and, an and compound inequality, then we're looking for where those two intervals overlap. And they overlap between negative 1 and 2. All right, negative 1 we note is not included, while 2 is included, so it would look like that. It's the graphical representation, or an interval notation would be negative 1, 2. All right, and there's the three notations for um, the solutions for this particular compound inequality with an and. Uh, I typically like the interval notation, but you should be able to go between um, all three notations. All right, so that leaves uh, one more example I'd like to talk about. All right, this is a compound inequality, and it's really just another way to write the and compound inequality, All right? Because really what we have here is we want, we want 4 to be less than or equal to 3x minus 5, 
that's that's like one inequality. And at the same time, 3x minus 5 needs to be less than 9. Everybody see that? There really are two inequalities here um, combined up into this one. I call it three-sided inequality because you've got 1, 2, and 3. All right, so uh, if, the, if the less than 9 was not here and you just had 4 is less than or equal to 3x minus 5, you would know how to solve that. You would just add 5 to both sides and divide by 3, right? And if the 4 is less than or equal to, if that part wasn't here, you would have 3x minus 5 is less than 9. Well, to solve that one, you would add 5 to both sides and then divide by 3, right? Well, we're going to do it all at once, looking at it in terms of three sides. So our goal is to get the x alone here in the middle, right? So to do that, we need to add 5 to all three, quote-unquote, sides. So adding 5 here to all three sides gives you 9 is less than or equal to 3x is less than 14. All right, and then divide all three sides by a positive 3, and so we get 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 14 thirds. All right, so we want numbers that are greater than 3, but at the same time, they have to be less than 14 thirds. Right, and 14 thirds is what? Everybody know what that is? It's a little more than four and a half, right? It's like four and two thirds. So on a number line, we would have three and fourteen thirds. And we want all numbers that are greater than three, so that would be to the right of three, and at the same time, those numbers have to be less than fourteen thirds. So that's to the left of fourteen thirds. So it's this area in the middle again. Everybody see that? And then three is included because of the less than or equal to, and the 14 thirds is a parenthesis. And then in interval notation, it's 3 and 14 thirds. And there are the three representations for this particular compound inequality. All right, so compound inequalities have the words and and or, uh, and sometimes the and is combined up into one little three-sided inequality is what I call it. All right, that's it. Go practice some problems, study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.